Hi, everybody. All right, this one is a little bit different from any other presentation I have ever done at camp. Is your mic on? Yeah. Hello, hello? It is on, it's just not close enough then, huh? Is that better? Yeah. All right, all right. So, because this one is so different from the ones I have done before, I'm gonna start with prayer. And this is uh, mainly taken from a, uh, a ministry called Ark of Grace Ministries. And uh, you should hear the lady who, who does this do it because like, only like an Italian from the, from the Bronx can do it at about 9,000 miles an hour. But uh, it's powerful and I have needed this prayer in every step of uh, preparing both presentations for camp this week. Father God, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, we come before you. We praise you that you are Almighty God, that you are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise due to your name. We glorify you, God, for all the blessings you have given us and that you are protecting us from the snares of the fowler. Father God, we humble your, ourselves before you today. Let us, become, let us become less so you become more in our lives. We acknowledge you sent your one and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to the earth, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us willingly to be the spotless lamb and the sacrifice for our sins. He was beaten, bruised, and whipped for our sins and our iniquity, then nailed to a cross, and he died a brutal death. And on that day, his blood purchased us back to you, our Father in heaven, and made a spectacle of the enemy before the whole earth and the heavenly realms, using what seemed to be a victory for evil to destroy the plans of the devil. He rose again in three days, ascended into heaven, and took his rightful place at the right hand of the Father, where he rules and reigns forevermore. We declare that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we honor that incredible sacrifice before you. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that your presence fill this place. Send your holy warring angels of all rankings and divisions to protect this place, this week, these presentations, and the people here today, this week, and in their travels home. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of Almighty God with authority come forth. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ that every plot, scheme, contract, assignment, attempted communication, weaponry, blueprint, attack, strategy, sabotage, hindrance, delay, interference, intimidation, threat, and the like, that the enemy, satanic agents, dark forces, unclean spirits, strong men, familiar spirits, puppets and agents of the enemy use to try to corrupt, compromise, block, or influence against us in any way, that these will be broken, canceled, aborted, destroyed, dismantled, disabled, bound, and cast back to the dry places and pits from which it came from to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ, far away from us, and not return or have anything sent in its place. Father, take all the glory for yourself. You are the author and finisher of our faith. And let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen and amen and amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. The conspiracy behind the conspiracies. For sources and more information, I would refer you to Dr. Michael Lake, Dr. Michael Heiser, Pastor Derek Prince, Vox Day, Ryan Peterson Esquire, Uncle John's Band Blog, Derek and Sharon Gilbert, Dr. Ken Johnson, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Thomas Horn, William Cooper, and dozens more. These presentations in one way or another have been under, in process for about five years. So Camp Constitution talks in prior years, these may seem familiar to you. What have we discussed before in terms of conspiracies? Agenda 21, hey, I remember that person. I remember that location, who here does? Global gun grabs, the LGBTQ plus XYZ WTF agenda. <laughs> See, I even wrote it down. Mass resistance, right? Mr. McManus on the Fed and Sound Money, James Perloff, Edwin Vieira, John McManus again, Somebody who's sitting right here again, right? Lord Moncton, Mr. Newman, you heard from her, him earlier today, Dr. Um, Duke Pesta. Then there's more. We haven't discussed all of these at camp, just, just a few of them. 
Bilderbergs, Freemasons, international bankers, MKUltra, the CIA, the FBI, Harp, Illuminati. You can read them as well as I can. And there's dozens more, right? What unites all of these? It's already been said today, Ephesians 6.12, for our struggle is not against human opponents, but against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers in the darkness around us, and evil spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. John Adams wrote to the Massachusetts militia in October of 1798, and he said, we have no government armed with power, capable of contending with human passions, unbridled by morality and religion. Avarice, ambition, revenge, or gallantry would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people, and it is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. When in, and when he says religious, he means Christian. Right. All right? He doesn't mean Buddhist. He doesn't mean Hindu. He doesn't mean Shinto or anything else. He means Christian. So if I translate this into modern terms, our Constitution is not a magical incantation of protection. Without constant defense by a moral and faith-filled people, it can and will be disregarded by tyrants on behalf of their demonic masters. So, when you have plans that last for centuries, it's not of human origin. What does history show? Genesis. Genesis 3, 1 to 7. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of, the tree of, of every tree of the garden? First thing, doubt. Hath God not said? Right? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. She's got it wrong. God never said not touch it. That's right. All right? She has misunderstood God's instructions. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her. Why didn't he stop her? With her. And he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So let's look at what really happens here. There's already a rebellion that has occurred. The serpent is already against God. I would refer you back to the space between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. God created the heavens and the earth and the earth had become without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Tohu vabohu, without form and void. The only places it's used in scripture is as judgment. What happened that there was judgment? We are not told, but something happened, and I would pause it, and many people would say, that there was a pre-Adamic rebellion that had already occurred and been judged. Those rebels already hated humanity, a new creation for God's family, and desired to destroy their special place. Because it never says anywhere that God gave the breath of life to the angels. Right. He gave that to man. Right? So there's hatred already for, for the first humans ever created. And the first human sin, you will be like God. So there's the desire to determine what is good and evil for ourselves, usurping God's role. The deception of the evil realm worked then, and it still works today. And in that rebellion, Adam ceded his rulership and dominion over the earth to the devil. Genesis 3.15. That's the first prophecy in the Bible. Right? 
and I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This starts the seed war. The seed of the woman, which presages the virgin birth, and the seed of the serpent. Everything else in the Bible elaborates on this seed war. From this verse, 315 in Genesis, to the end of Revelation, it's about the seed war. Okay? As you go through scripture, you will see the devil and his minions narrowing in on the target of who's going to be this promised seed. All of humanity, down to Noah, down to the other lines, down to, down to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, David, all the way to the Messiah, and then on throughout history. Watch for that when you read scripture. The seed of the serpent will eventually be the man of sin that is talked about in Revelation. Whether or not it's a human possessed by Satan or an actual offspring, we don't know. It's not important. There will be a seed of the serpent. Now, let's, we're going back to Genesis 3.6. But we're going to look at it in the light of 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh. It was pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, the pride of life. It all tells the same story from the first page to the last. There's only one page that's irrelevant in the Bible, and that's the page that separates the Old Testament from the New. <laughs> Genesis 6, the flood. Why was the flood needed? It's the first attempt at destruction of the human line by the powers of evil, and they nearly succeeded. Genesis 6.12, all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth, but Noah was tamim, without flaw, perfect in his generations. Tamim is without physical flaw, and it is a requirement later on for the temple sacrifices. Not a scratch, not a blemish. He was fully human. He and his line were the only ones not corrupted humanity. And you'll notice in the last couple of years, they're starting to try and do it again, aren't they? Yeah. And Noah found grace in God's eyes. Genesis 9. This is after the flood. There's the repeat of the mandate from Eden to be fruitful and multiply and start over. This was God's great reset. Uh -huh. Right? And... And I tell myself this sometimes, never think that your preaching or your, your proselytizing and your evangelizing is in vain. Noah spent 120 years telling people to repent because the flood was coming, and the only people he saved was his own family. And none of us would be here if he hadn't gotten on that ark. Okay? Genesis 11, there's another rebellion. The Tower of Babel and Nimrod. And God divorced humanity for a time. Okay? We're going to look at Deuteronomy 32.8 a whole bunch of times tonight. Um, God divorced humanity and gave us over to other powers. And humanity was mired in idolatry and wickedness. Again. When the Most High distributed nations as he scattered the descendants of Adam, he set up boundaries for the nations according to the number of the angels of God. So God makes borders, God makes nations. All right? And he gave instructions to Israel. Do not look up into the sky and see the sun and the moon and the stars or even any ornaments of heaven, lest you be led astray and worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God portioned them out to all the nations below heaven. 
All right, an excerpt from Deuteronomy 17. If in one of your cities that the Lord God has given to you, there is found a man or woman who will do evil before the Lord your God to transgress his covenant, and going, they serve other gods and worship them, the sun or the moon, or any from the host of heaven, host is another word for army of heaven, that I did not assign. You shall lift up this man or this woman and stone them with stones and they will die. And the hand of the witnesses shall be on them first to put them to death. And the hand of the people shall be on them last. And you shall remove the evil from yourselves. So God was very jealous for his people to stay true to him. He takes it seriously. So we should too. All right. And when the nations will ask about Israel's exile in Deuteronomy 29, because they abandoned the covenant of Yahweh and served other gods, not allotted to them. They were uprooted and scattered. So when the Most High apportioned the nations at his dividing up of the sons of men, he fixed the boundaries of the people according to the number of the sons of God. The Beneha Elohim, the sons of God, is always used that phrase of direct creations of God. Adam was Beneha Elohim. Right? He, or Ben Ha Elohim, direct creation of God, as was Eve. The rest of us are sons of Adam. We are not direct creations of God until we're born again. God doesn't have any grandchildren, just children. So the rule of the Gentile nations has been turned over to lesser members of God's divine counsel for a time. He still intends all the nations to be blessed. He gave promises to Abraham and to David. And that's even why we had Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, because we get to be grafted back into God's family. More history. Babylon and Medo-Persia. Daniel's visions gave history centuries in advance to the point where people said that they were written after the fact and then just backdated, except that it was translated from the Hebrew into the Greek 300 years before the stuff had happened. So that's kind of hard to do. Um, Nebuchadnezzar's dream showed kingdoms getting less noble and more brittle, finally being destroyed by God at the uttermost end of days. And Daniel in chapter 9, his verses 24 to 27, the, the interrupted prayer told Israel to the day when their Messiah would arrive, would arrive as king. And you should, uh, we're indebted to Sir Robert Anderson of Scotland Yard, who in the 1800s uh, wrote The Coming Prince, where he did all the math and followed all the secular calendars back. And from the day of the decree to the day of the triumphal entry was to the day the number given to Daniel by the angel Gabriel. Over the course of centuries, God's timing was perfect to the day. All right, but in Babylon and Medo-Persia, there were the next steps to disrupt the coming of the, the Messiah and the reunion of all the peoples under God. There's the story of Esther and Mordecai and Haman's plot to destroy the Jewish people. Um, the book of Esther details that. It is the only book of the Bible that does not specifically reference God, but it shows him working secretly in every line of that book. Greece and the Seleucid Empire, Antiochus Epiphanes' attempt to destroy, destroy the Jewish religion and people. He massacred thousands of the Jews. He outlawed the reading of the Torah. He outlawed the temple rites. He destroyed every copy of the Torah that his soldiers could find. And he sacrificed a sow on the altar in the Holy of Holies. And that was the final straw that set off the Maccabean revolt. And they spent three years overthrowing Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, and then they, they won, got rid of him, cleansed the temple, rededicated it. And they only had enough consecrated oil to last for a day. But it lasted for eight days while they were making more. They're still celebrating that to, the, to, the, to this day as Hanukkah. Rome. The second temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the armies of Titus Vespasian, and the Hebrew peoples were dispersed into the Gentile nations. And they did not go back to their land 
until 1948, as prophesied in Isaiah 66, verse 8. After Rome, it fell due to internal corruption, its systems devolved and spread, but the powers behind the earthly powers continued over time. They went through the Franks and the Merovingians and the Carolingians and the Austro-Hungarians. Go read history. Always seeking to corrupt, to infiltrate, and to invert God's plans. And those powers are still at work today. So we wrestle against Rulers, that's the archas, authorities, the exousias, the cosmic powers, the cosmocratogras, and the spiritual forces of evil, pneumaticatis polipirias. The first three terms are terms of geographic authority. They have dominion over territories. The powers that were put in place after Babel grew to want to be worshipped as gods and to have humans as their subjects and slaves. They will be judged and sentenced by Jesus. The uh, rulers, the archas, they have specific geographic areas in their domain and those areas change a little bit. I, they fight. It, the, the, the kingdom of evil is not a monolithic block. They're jealous of each other. They want more. There's always infighting and moving around. Okay? They fight. They jostle. They backstab. They make backroom deals. Um, anything you see politicians that you don't like doing, you can now know where they learned it from. Right? The authorities, the exousias, are over the local rulers and they're infighting too. Right? And yes, there's treason among the ranks in all of this. Uh, the cosmo, uh, cosmocratoras are the highest class that we as believers have to deal with. They have the largest areas of jurisdiction. And these are all separate from the strong men that are over regions, but they are closely related. So far as I can tell, this is not my area of expertise. The spiritual forces of evil, the, the nevnatica dispolirias, God's warring angels deal with entities at that level, says Dr. Michael Lake. Who is the prince of the power of the air? Satan. 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 He's above our pay grade. So, but the kingdom of darkness is highly organized. There's assigned areas of influence. There's jockeying for position. The devil counterfeits the natural order of God because good, uh, good creates God is in charge. Evil can only corrupt. Right? And they always announce their intentions. Nobody can really tell if they're required to do this by God or if they just like really kind of get off on it. But they announce their intentions in advance, but always in a manner that provides them with plausible deniability, both before the fact and after the fact. They do it with movies. They do it with conferences like the event 201 just before the oh, serendipitous arrival of COVID. Right? Uh, they do it with concern trolling on social media. They did it with the Georgia Guidestones that God took out. Our fear is their weapon and their jollies. It fills them with pride to terrify us. So. God tells us 365 times in the Bible, do not fear. Once for every day. That's our marching orders in good part. Psalm 82, it's 81 in, in the Septuagint and in the Catholic Bibles. I don't know if this is a meeting that God called or if he crashed a meeting of the divine council of the people who rule earth. Think of this as a courtroom scene. God has taken his place in the divine council in the midst of the gods. He holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, God speaking, you are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. 
They've already been judged. Where are these powers now and what are they up to? They corrupt governments. They also move into non-governmental groups. They always seek global dominance. They always seek to subdue, to usurp God's timeline, and to institute the beast system, that being the mark of the beast. The beast and the, the, there's the, the man of sin, also known as the beast, and the false prophet. The beast system is the one that will have the mark and the force worship and the rest. They are territorial. They will fight for new space. They will fight to hold existing space. And in Western countries these days, there is no distinction between government and media and oligarch. It's all one. And they're all enthralled to these powers by choice or by deception. A couple of quotes from Tolkien that are really apropos. He was a, a deeply faithful man, and so much of what he wrote in The Lord of the Rings is directly applicable. I read it for the first time when I was like 12 or 13, and I thought it was like so amazing, this, this story. I never thought I was going to live through it. <sighs> the evil that was devised long ago works on in many ways, whether the devil himself stands or falls. Right? The United States is their current focus of attack. The key to recognize the action of these evil powers is that they take the good, the beautiful, and the true and turn them on their head. And we're going to talk a lot about that Thursday morning. So what's holding them back, other than the faith of the people, the remnant that still remain? One of the big things that we're here to study this, this week is the Constitution. And that was an amazing document written by men of faith. Um, despite over a hundred years of relentless attack, it still holds. And we're seeing, you know, this year's the, the Supreme Court decisions, some of the states are, are, are acting. Um, but even so, it was. Gondor that brought about its own decay, falling by degrees into dotage, and thinking that the enemy was asleep, who was only banished, not destroyed. That's what we have done as the church since this country was founded just about. We founded a nice Christian country with a constitution that was going to protect the God-given rights of the people, and we let it coast. That doesn't work. We go back to what John Adams wrote to the Massachusetts militia. Mm. Modern day um, bits to take away. There's the old adage, never attribute to wickedness what can be attributed to stupidity. That's backwards. Never attribute to stu stupidity what can be attributed to wickedness because that is what we are seeing in the entire world around us. The powers behind the nations and their governments and the non-governmental organizations like the World Economic Forum and the International Monetary Fund and the United Nations and the S Council for Foreign, Relation, uh, Foreign Relations and we can go back to that list too, right? The powers behind them and their human meat puppets hate God, they hate Christians, and they want every one of you and your families dead or enslaved. They'll take either. They want power, they want wealth, they want worship, they want us terrified. These are spiritual forces that have been defeated by Christ at the cross, but they're not dead yet. It was obvious at the Battle of Berlin that Germany was going down. It was obvious. They fought to the end. Every day these forces hold on is one more day before they spend eternity in the lake of fire. If that was the, the, the fate facing you, you would fight to the absolute bitter end. Okay. The thing they fear the most is the Great Commission to spread the gospel to all the world and the fullness of the Gentiles 
which, which number only God knows, that heralds the instituting of the kingdom. Because that's when they end. Every soul saved brings them closer to destruction. No wonder they hate the gospel. You shall know them by their fruits. So the more centralized a system is, or the solution to an invented problem is, the easier it is to coerce and control the people. Anytime they want to fix the world and have short timelines before a catastrophe, you know, um, Paris is going to be underwater by the year 1989. <laughs> San Francisco is going to be underwater by the year 2000. We have 10 years left to save the planet from burning to a cinder, they said 30 years ago with short timelines before catastrophe. These are the places where the power-hungry, demonic deceivers lurk and work. And again, compare it to the list that we started with, and you'll see so much overlap. Next time, we're going to talk about how we fight. Now, I think I talked a little fast here because this went a little faster than I expected it to. So let me take a deep breath and I can take questions. <laughs> or I can start again at the beginning. <laughs> questions will be easier? Yeah, it'll probably be easier on me too. <laughs> questions, comments, amusing anecdotes? Yeah. Then we're done till Thursday morning. Yes, Kathy. Why don't you go to bring the slide and all those organizations? Oh, sure. This one? Yeah. Okay. All the uh, all, all all the the uh, obvious suspects plus a few others. All right. I'm sorry. Five hundred one C three is 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 part of uh, you know the the big government control stuff, yes. Um, let's see. Um, we'll be talking about UFOs and aliens and demons um, on Thursday, so that's why that one's in there. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry, you need to speak up. because. Uh, event 201, there was this big, huge um, conference that they had that they called Event 201, uh, the Bill Gates from Hell, which I love that, that, that name. Um, his foundation and a, and a bunch of other organizations put on something in October of 2019 that they called Event 201, which was how the globe was going to do, respond to a, a pandemic, uh, a pandemic flu. And the first COVID cases were reported two months later. How conveniently timed. I'm not going to specifically talk about, uh, uh, about that, no. I'm just listing it as, as, as one of the, the conspiracies that, that people talk about, you know, about um, um, you know, control of weather and directed energy weapons and all sorts of, uh, of, of, of other stuff. And I mean, if, if you try to go di uh, diving into the conspiracy theory world, you, you will find hundreds of them. And, and by the way, conspiracy theory is, is not the right term anymore. The proper term to use is spoiler alerts. <laughs> Back, back in the day, that it would take decades between a conspiracy theory coming out and it being proven true. It's down to about six to eight weeks at this point between somebody coming up with a conspiracy theory that you have to be insane to believe in and, oh, yeah, that was right. <laughs> we, we never denied that. But those people who believed it six weeks ago, they're still crazy. Yeah. Don't listen to them. <laughs> yes, Kathy. I know you have a lot of time left, so I think it would be helpful if you said a little bit about each of them. Well, if you want to, you know, 
don't have to, but you know, the, the, the thing is that a bunch of them I just listed as, as examples, and a bunch of the others have, you can go to the Camp Constitution YouTube or Rumble channels and see entire presentations from experts on them. Right, you know, Mr. Shirtliff on Article 5, Mr. McManus on, on the Fed and sound money, it, it just uh, Dr. Soon on climate change. It just, you, you, can, you can go listen to all of them um, and you can, you can look the, the, the rest of them up uh, on your own. I shall leave it as an exercise for the student. <laughs> yes, sir? What is the Article B convention? Article 5. Oh, sorry, Article 5. Roman numeral 5. Okay, that's, to, that's to, to throw out the Constitution by having a Constitutional Convention. Okay? Um, if, if you really want to, to dive in and aren't sure where to start, I would recommend that you go to YouTube and look up Dr. Michael Lake and Dr. Michael Heiser. All right? Um, These two, these two at the top here, Michael Lake and, My and Michael Heiser. Um, Dr. Lake has done extensive research on a lot of the conspiracy theories, and he has some really interesting ideas about how all of this works. Um, there's a lot of really good people out there, and I don't think that it is humanly possible for any one student of the scripture to have everything right because scripture has in it everything we need to be saved, but it doesn't have everything in it because some of it isn't any of our business. And some of it, if told, would be giving too much information to the kingdom of darkness. So examine everything that, that people tell you, compare it with the totality of scripture and feel free to disagree because we are all human. Okay? Dr. Lake, he's got some fabulous ideas. He's got some other things that I think are a little out there. Dr. Heiser, he's done incredible research on the Divine Council. Um, the Psalm 82, the one that I read, right? That kind of set him off on a quest that's gone on at this point for about 15 years that has included a half a dozen really excellent books um, supernatural, the unseen realm, reversing Hermon, um, the naked Bible, uh, I, I dare you to bore me with the Bible, uh, and an entire new school of theology, you know, which I studied at for two years and now have a certificate. And so, like I said, this I've spent a long time getting these presentations ready and trying to take two years of of. Uh, grad level courses and distill it into a half an hour presentation is a little difficult. Um, Pastor Derek Prince, he did, uh, he died in 2003-ish and um, he did an awful lot on spiritual warfare and he's got some fabulous, fabulous books. There's also uh, podcasts and, uh, and audio on YouTube. Um, Vox Day is a blogger and commentator uh, who is a strong proponent of the, the good, the beautiful, and the true. And he has a, a very uh, interesting and different take on a lot of what's going on. Um, and again, don't agree with everything he has to say, uh, but his perspective is always excellent. Um, Ryan Peterson has done, he's an attorney, so he brings all those analytical legal skills to his analysis of Genesis 6 and the whole issue of uh, the fallen ones, the, the, the Nephilim. And he's, done, he's written several books about that. Again, highly recommended. Uh, Uncle John's Band uh, at Blogspot, again, he's got long, beautifully illustrated, fabulous articles on how to recognize the inversions of the beast system. Derek and Sharon Gilbert have done incredible books on, um, they follow some of the, the old gods, uh, follow them through, um, you know, through different ancient cultures and show where they're where they're reemerging today. You know the 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 new age. The the proper pronunciation of new age is actually newage, as in rhyming with sewage. Uh, 
but the, the, the new age gods are the old gods repackaged. Right? And a lot of the stuff that, that they demanded is what is being demanded today, including child sacrifice. So they have, again, fabulous books. Sharon actually has a, an entire series of uh, like supernatural novels. Um, um, oh, Piffle, the, I forget the, uh, the, the name of the series, but, but it's fabulous and uh, it starts with uh, like the Scotland Yard murders, uh, the, the, the Jack the Ripper murders, and, and follows it through with a supernatural twist, staying very scripturally true. Ken Johnson has done extensive research on the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and he's got some amazing stuff that goes with the Dead Sea Scroll calendar, um, which is different from the ones that the Pharisees and the Sadducees used in the, in the days of Jesus. Um, and there's some prophetic implications with that as well. L.A. Marzulli has been investigating for decades the UFO and aliens uh, from a Christian perspective. Uh, and he has some fabulous, fabulous uh, work. Um, there's even a site that he's investigated, it's the America Stonehenge, which is in Salem, New Hampshire. And there's, there's an inscription there um, that they found under what's an altar stone, or they think was an altar stone, and that was like, you know, 4,000, put in place 4,000 years ago or shortly after the flood. And there's an inscription that was in the museum there that nobody had any idea what it was because because they didn't know the language. And L.A. brought in somebody um, who said, that's, that's Iberian Punic. Okay, Iberia as in like Spain, Portugal, Iberia. Uh, so they had it translated. And it says something like, you know, to Baal of the Canaanites. So it's an inscription to the, the, the Prince of Darkness of the Canaanites of the Mideast in Salem, New Hampshire, 4,000 years ago. And that site is aligned perfectly to the center of the main trilithon at Stonehenge, England, to Machu Picchu, to Copper Canyon, and a whole bunch of other uh, Aztec sites, and uh, the Great Pyramid at Giza. It's like, there's, there's some seriously weird stuff going on in this world that we have no idea is there. Tom Horn, William Cooper, you know, I, I could keep you busy for a few years with references. <laughs> yes, there was a question. Ma Madame. Yeah, in the, um, the land grabs that you had on there, that would be seen as being Holland where the Dutch farmers went with the tractors. Uh, yes, and also BlackRock in this country buying up houses at super inflated prices, and then people like Bill Gates from hell, uh, or Gates of hell, uh, buying up uh, huge tracts of farmland. Uh, and uh, yeah, all of that. There was another hand up somewhere. Oh, I'm being told I need to stop. Oh, either that or he's, he wants me to choke myself and I don't think I want to do that, thank you. <laughs> Flagpole? 